we're looking at the sort of fundamental biology of pollinators and, and across to the practical implications in the field to understand and protect pollinator populations whilst making sure they are providing a service which farmers and others might need in terms of pollination. Bee populations are struggling with our modern farmed landscapes amongst other stressors such as disease um, and really our group tries to look at the whole range of things that is affecting bees so that we can get the complete picture. There's been a huge resurgence in interest in beekeeping in the last five years or so. In our association, I think a lot of us are interested in being part of the wider ecology. I think the thing that impressed me most that came from ESI and was published in Nature was the suggestion of disease spreading from honeybees to the wild bee population. And I think it behoves beekeepers to look after their bees properly and to keep on top of disease. We grow hundreds of acres of courgettes and the margins are very, very tight. The bottom line is the most important thing to us and we need to get a sustainable return for our investment. In collaboration with the ESI, we came up with this PhD project where we could identify what is actually pollinating the crop and what the benefit of those pollinators are to the yield. Thirdly, how we can increase the number of pollinators through changing our farming practices accordingly. Well, the, the, the benefits of Jess's project to anyone growing a flowering cucurbit crop is that we will have a quantifiable research base to show the benefits of growing pollinator mix or introducing pollinators. Whichever the outcome, there will be a cost benefit to anyone growing a flowering crop. The ESI has always had a really strong connection with local businesses and helped them to develop their products and also I suppose to commercialise some of the research that we do at the university. We were approached by a local design company called Green and Blue and what they do is they develop wildlife friendly products. They were interested in developing a brick but with holes in in which solitary bees can come and nest. We're testing basically what sort of bees use the brick um, and also sort of how many eggs they lay and how well they, they survive. They were really keen to have us involved so that we could look and see how effective their products are for the wildlife that they're hoping to encourage because these have the sort of potential to be built into many urban developments. Our research is getting a lot of international attention at the moment by the Environmental Protection Agency in the USA. They're very interested in understanding how multiple stressors affect honeybee colonies with the models that we are developing that sort of allows us to answer some of those questions. The European Food Standards Agency, because of their interest in our model, they've done a 90-page review. They've basically come to the conclusion that a model like behave is the sort of ideal for answering the sort of types of questions that they're interested in at the moment. The model is a really good vehicle to introduce the empirical information that we've gathered, look at the interactions of all of those and therefore ensure that the policy and regulations that the governments are using are based on sound scientific evidence.